Dear students, I'm here to talk to you about uh, identification in the conditional and multinomial logit models. Covered it a bit at the lecture today, but it seemed that some people were confused about it. So I'm going to go a bit more in depth with what we covered and uh, go about it a slightly different way. <clears throat> Let's start by looking at the conditional logit model. As you recall, we have our uh, xj beta plus epsilon, so x's vary with j, so with the choice, the obvious analog, or the uh, example being horsepower and other characteristics of a car, the price and so on, and a fixed beta. And I claimed that we cannot estimate an intercept, and I can, I'm going to prove this mathematically. What I said at the lecture was that, as you can see, there's just this one common utility term so if we add a constant term here, beta naught, then we're going to increase the, all of the utilities by the exact same number, and that's going to leave the ordering unchanged. And since the only outcome we observe is the uh, what what y the person chose, this uh, cannot be uh, identified. We cannot distinguish between different intercepts. Uh, in a different uh, in a different video, I'm going to talk a little bit more about identification and what it means intuitively. Okay, so let's go about and prove this. So, let's put up a model here where we just have one x variable here. You can see that it's scalar because I have beta in front of it. And then we have an intercept. And I'm going to argue that, uh, that this identification is going to fail. And recall that identification goes on the criterion function that... I can find a different set of parameter values that gives the same criterion value. And since we work with maximum likelihood here, I'm going to be working with the, the likelihood function, which is based off of the choice probability. It's the log of the choice probability. So let's look at the choice probability. Probability that an individual chooses car J is the probability that that utility was higher than all of the other utilities. Okay, so let's insert what the utilities are here beta naught plus beta 1 x1 j plus epsilon ij and same thing here but with h on the other side. And now you can see that we have beta naught on both sides of this inequality so we can subtract it on both sides and then this event in here is true for all of the same stochastic variables as this event here. I've just subtracted the same number of both on both sides of the inequality but namely beta naught so the probabilities are the same. But now I've shown that no matter what value beta naught has, then that probability is the same. So this shows that even if I said that here are the true parameter values, beta naught is 2 and beta 1 is 3, say, then I can pick a different set where beta naught is 4 and beta 1 is the same, and it will give the same choice probabilities. And in that sense, it'll give the same, or, and therefore it'll give the same criterion function value. Therefore, we have non-identification. So that's the mathematical proof of non-identification of the intercept in the conditional logit model. Now I'm going to prove why we need to normalize uh, the betas for one of the alternatives in the multinomial logit. I guess you have put conditional logit. This is, of course, the multinomial logit model. So in the multinomial logit model, uh, this is uh, the x's vary with the individuals. So x's could be income, work distance, and so forth. And the betas vary with j, except that for one of the alternatives, here I've picked the first, they have to be normalized to zeros, a vector of zeros. So the claim here is that we cannot estimate beta 1 along with the remaining betas. I'm going to prove this again by contradiction by showing that I can find, an, uh, if you say to me that this is the true parameters, then I can find a different set of parameters that give the same criterion function value, or give the same predictions, if you will. So here we have it, now it says multinomial logit correctly. Um, so uh, now I have removed the uh, normalization requirement here. So let's do this, supposing that xi is scalar, uh, as in the conditional logit case, to simplify our life. So. The probability that individual i chooses some card j conditional on his character or her characteristics, that is the probability that the utility for that car is greater than all of the other utilities. And again, the log of this guy here is our criterion function. All right, let's insert 
the utilities and here you can see I've flipped beta in front so I'm telling you that x here I'm assuming x is scalar just to simplify this it's exactly the same when if it, when it's um, when x is a vector oh there's an extra at the end sorry about that so anyway the the next step here is to subtract beta uh, hx h on both sides in the inequality we can do that and then we can collect terms here so now we have beta j minus beta h times xi. And here's the trick. Now we can add the same number to both of these and then everything here is unchanged. Okay, so we can choose some other beta tilde here where we just, for all of the k's, add some number. And then this thing in here is unchanged for all of those inequalities, uh, as I'm writing here, because the deltas will cancel out. And then the statement is true for all of the same values of xi and the, all of the epsilons. And therefore, if you said to me, here are the true uh, betas, um, then I can construct a different set of betas. I just add the same number to all of them. And then these inequalities are preserved. And so it gives the same um, choice probability. And so that model uh, cannot be identified. And what it uh, intuitively means is that uh, we need we need to normalize one of the betas, and we can only interpret uh, what the effect of work distance is for any given car relative to a baseline car. We cannot say that if you have a higher work distance, then all of your utilities are going to uh, change because it's going to leave all of your preferences um, the same, the ordering's the same. It needs to be relative to that baseline car when you get more work distance. Do you like this car relatively more or relatively less than that baseline car? And it's different from in the conditional logic case where we say if the horsepower goes up of a car, then the, uh, the utilities um, can change uh, for all of the different cars depending on the betas. Okay, the third thing I said was that, the disper uh, that we can't identify the variance of the epsilon turn or the dispersion of the epsilons we can't identify uh, the variance of this guy. And in some sense, the betas are going to be relative to how dispersed this variance term is. Um, I'm gonna prove that by contradiction again. So I'm gonna put up a model here when I, where I have a sigma times epsilon here. And so recall that if epsilon itself uh, you know, you know, if epsilon is normal, standard normal, zero one, then sigma times epsilon will be will be normally distributed zero sigma squared. So, multiplying by sigma here is a way of telling you that this whole thing now has a dispersion, and it makes the algebra for proving it a little bit simpler. Okay, once again, we're going to work from the criterion function, which is the choice probability that you choose car J. That's the probability that that was the highest utility you could get. Once again, I can see I've copied this conditioning on J and Xi. Sorry about that. So that's this inequality. Now we've inserted the definitions of the utilities. So what you see here is that if we multiply by K on both sides of these inequality, we can do that if K is positive. Then then it's then we've left it unchanged and the probability is the same. So if we take all of the beta j's and multiply them by k and take all of the sigmas and multiply them by k, then we get the same probabilities. The probabilities are unchanged. So in other words, this time if you tell me that the true parameter values are some beta and sigma, then I just multiply them both by the same positive number and I create the same, the, the same choice probabilities as what you gave me. In other words, the model is not identified. And note that uh, even if we were to compare with the alternative a e h equal to 1, the normalized alternative, uh, where the betas are zeros here, then it just says k sigma epsilon i1. So it still works. We can still multiply by uh, by k on all of the um, all of the betas 
uh, and still leave beta 1 uh, normalized. And this in the inequality will still be preserved. So that proves uh, the identification breakdown in these cases.